Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Joel here. Um, just wanted to come on today and have a great conversation with you. You're going to notice the title of this message says, I'm struggling. Can I really do this? Um, this, this conversation is uh, a conversation that's happening today because of a question that someone inboxed me about. As you guys notice, I had a video that I just did recently, and I was talking about um, submitting to God and resisting the devil. I was talking in that conversation about the importance of um, doing some things right spiritually, but also abstaining from some things that we need to abstain from in order to be able to win and to not have a, a compromised life. And someone inboxed me, and I, I think it's important that I answer their question. And I wanted to do this message um, based on their question because they were saying that, you know, they have tried their best to will themselves to not do wrong. They've tried their best to use willpower to abstain from doing things they used to do, like pornography, like uh, alcohol, um, just bad behavior that they, they just seem to be prone to bad behavior. And they're believers and they go to church and they try to read the word, they listen to messages, they're working on themselves but they said that I'm struggling to abstain from bad behavior because it just seems as though I'm prone to bad behavior. And um, I felt, I really felt for, for them and, and, the, and what they're struggling with is real. So I really wanted to come on here right now and um, address that topic because um, I think the biggest thing that we face or the misconception that we have is that we have to use willpower to be able to abstain or uh, from bad behavior or to be able to do the right thing that we must use willpower and that's not what I what I meant when I um, when I uh, did that message so today I would like us to dive into a quick message on the Word of God because it's the Word of God that's going to empower you to be able to do those things. God wants to empower you and help you to be able to, um, to, to, to live a better life. But I want to show you what really changes you, right? The, the, the main question that this person was having is, I will myself to do things, but I cannot do them. And then they're saying that, I'm not seeing real change, like real drastic and lasting change in my life. How can I do that? Amen. And so I'd like to address that today. I hope you guys are having a good Sunday afternoon. Um, it's nice and sunny out there right now. So I'm thanking you guys for joining me. Stick with me for 20 minutes or so. And I will dive into this message and answer your questions. Help me out by interacting in the comment section so this algorithm can pick this up but stick with me on this message because struggling and not being able to make lasting decisions to change and stick with those decisions um, it's not something that you're gonna win with by willpower and I'm gonna talk about that today all right so let's talk about it here's uh, Hebrews 4 and 12 let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12 real quick it says this, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is discerning of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I want you to understand when I was talking in that message, right? I was talking about getting into the Word of God and getting into the Word of God really allows you, right, with the help of the Holy Spirit, very important, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God begins to do a work in you that you can't do on your own. I'm going to come back to Hebrews 4 and 12, but I want to go down to John 1 and 1 because Hebrews 4 and 12 is going to make more sense to you when you understand John 1 and 1. And here's what John says. 
John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? So one thing we, we must understand is that the Word of God is God. So when, when someone says to you, man, you need to get with God, what does getting with God look like? What, did that, what does that mean? Does it mean that I'm going to go sit down in a, in a little corner and wait for God to show up? Does it mean that I'm going to go sit in a dark corner and cry and beg God to show up? What does that mean? What does that mean? Good afternoon, Kelsey. What does it mean when we tell people, you need to go get with God? You need to go spend some time with God. Those are terminologies that we tell people all the time, but we normally don't tell them how to do that. What does it look like getting with God? And, and I want to make it simple for us today. What it looks like when we get with God, it looks like we're getting with the Word of God. Because John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Bible is making it clear to us that the Word of God is God. So if I'm going to get with God, what I want to do is I want to open up the Word of God. Make sense? Every time I open up the Bible or every time I turn on a Bible app and I let the Word of God play and I listen to it, right, without distraction, every time I crack open that Word of God or I play the Word of God, right, I am now with God because the Bible is making it clear in John 1 and 1 that the Word was with God in the beginning and the Word was God. Make sense? The Word of God is God. This is why Jesus was called the living Word of God, right? The Bible tells us that the Word became flesh. When Jesus came into the earth, the Bible told us that the Word became flesh. So the Word of God and God Himself, they're one and the same. So if I'm going to get with God, the best way to get with God is to get with the Word of God because they're one and the same. Am I making sense? Jump in the chat. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if this Word is making sense to you. So now, when we go back to Hebrews 4 and 12, Hebrews 4 and 12 begins to show us how the Word of God makes a difference in our life. Now that we understand that getting with God means that I'm getting with the Word of God, now look at Hebrews 4 and 12 and what it's saying. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the Word of God is living. So if the Word is God, if the Word is God, as it says in John 1 and 1, guess what? If, 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 if the Word became flesh when Jesus uh, came on the earth, and then Jesus died and then He rose again, guess what? It makes sense what Hebrews 4 and 12 is telling us. For the Word of God is living and powerful. God is not dead. And there's life in the Word of God. So the Word of God itself has life. So when you read the Word of God, it's the only book that, that, that isn't just words on a page. It's the only book that has the ability to perform surgery on mankind. It has the power, because it's alive, to perform surgery on mankind. Good afternoon, guys. And so this is where we're able to see real change in our life. So my buddy was saying to me on, on, on the message, he's like, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with making a change. I go to church, but I go back and do the same old thing. I read my word sometimes, but I go back and do the same old thing. The one thing that we must understand is that the word of God is alive. And it has the ability to make changes in us. So it says, for the word of God is living and powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And here's what it says it does piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. Remember all these teachings we do on spiritual warfare. When, when someone is dealing with an unclean spirit, let's say it's a spirit of fear, or let's say it's a spirit of infirmity, 
or it's a spirit of um, of lust, right? Whatever spirit that person is dealing with, that spirit has now attached itself to the soul of the human being. Spirits attach themselves to the soul just like viruses attach themselves to the hard drive of a computer, right? The soul is your hard drive. So the soul of the human being is where they're wrestling with unclean spirits, whether it's lust, whether it's anger, whether it's a spirit of offense, whether it's a spirit of depression, a spirit of sadness. It's all, right, written on the hard drive of the human being, which is the soul. Now, the soul is the mind, the will, the emotion, the imagination, and the intellect. That's the soul. So this scripture is saying that the word of God, right, is living and powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, which has the ability to pierce even to the division of soul and spirit. So when someone is wrestling with, spirit, with, with spiritual issues, the word of God is like a two-edged sword, which has the ability to go into the soul and slice away those things that are attached to the soul right severing them from that person that's how powerful the word of god is remember scripture also tells us right that it's through knowledge that the just shall be delivered right and it is the knowledge of the word of god it is the knowledge of the word of god so it's a two-edged sword piercing to the division of soul and spirit so the word of God can slice away at the soul and remove anything that has attached itself to the soul that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of the word of God does that make sense I hope that's making sense to you that is how powerful the word of God is amen that's how powerful the Word of God is. So the Bible also tells us that, you know, when we look at the, the, the a full armor of God and we get to the sword of God, which is the, the sword of the Spirit, the Bible tells us to put on, right, the full armor of God. And then when you get down to the bottom of the, the full armor of God, it talks about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword, it's what it does the cutting away. The sword is what does the cutting away. And the sword of the spirit realm is the word of God. And that's why Hebrews 4 and 12 is so powerful. Now it says it has the ability to do some cutting away and the division of the soul and spirit. And then it says, and joint and marrow. And it is discerning of our thoughts and our intent of the heart. Very, very powerful. So the word of God can cut away, right, from the soul, from the spirit, joint and marrow, which means that the word of God has healing power, right? All of the life of mankind is in the marrow. And the word of God has the ability to cut away, right, severing between joint and marrow, soul and spirit. So whether we're sick in the soul or sick in the body, the word of God has the power to free us, to heal us, to restore us. And that's what Hebrews 4 and 12 is letting us know. And I believe that it's really, really powerful when we really now begin to digest the word of God and allow it to help our soul. There are many people that are struggling with handling life because life is overwhelming, right? And the only thing that can help their soul, which is their mind, their will, their emotion, their imagination and intellect, is the Word of God. And then there are many of us struggling with the spirit of infirmity, where our bodies are now getting sick because of the spiritual affliction that happened to us. And the Word of God also is the solution to that. Let's look at what Matthew 4 and 4 says. Matthew 4 and 4 says, God, Jesus says, He answered and said, Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now what is man? Man is the spirit. All right? When we say human or humus, human, we're saying humus man. Humus meaning dirt, man meaning spirit. So the word human means a spirit in a dirt body or a dirt suit. Right? When Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, what he's saying is your spirit, your spirit cannot live by bread, but it only survives on the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So in order to strengthen the real you, right, you have to use the word of God because that's the food that the spirit of God in you lives on, all right? When we're not feeding the spirit man with the word of God, we're becoming weaker and weaker in spirit. And that is when we become compromised. That's when, you know, a, a spirit of infirmity or unclean spirits are able to overwhelm us because we're not feeding on the word of God. Make sense? None of us are exempt from this, right? Some of your greatest spiritual heroes, pastors and teachers, right that you know of they need to do this also no one is exempt from being compromised spiritually if we are not feeding ourselves with the word of god make sense psalm 119 and 130 tells us this the entrance of your word gives light it gives understanding to the simple so the entrance of the word of God into our life, it, it removes darkness, right? It removes darkness and it brings light. And light means you're, getting, you're going to get revelation. Light means that you're going to expose things. Light means that you're going to begin to understand things better that's needed to be understood. All right? Here's what James 1 and 20, 22 says. It says, but be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So be doers of the word and not just hearers only, because the word of God, if it's not, if we're not doing the word, what's going to automatically happen is that we're going to deceive ourselves. That's what the word of God is telling us, right? So if you're reading the word and you feel like you're still struggling and you're not overcoming, you have to now look at yourself and say, am I a doer of the word? Am I really a doer of the word? Or am I just reading this like a, a book, but I'm not applying it to my life? Does that make sense? All right? Hope that makes sense. Because doing means that I'm going to step out the door and I'm going to begin to apply what I've learned. Make sense? It means that if the scripture says speak, right? pull down things with my words, then I'm going to use my words when I'm feeling down, I'm going to speak against things, right? But there's no need to know that scripture that tells us that we need to use our words against our thoughts, but when the thoughts are overwhelming us, we're just simply sitting there thinking about it, falling into depression. At some point, we have to become a doer of the word of God, and we have to open up our mouth and speak the scriptures against those things that are trying to overwhelm us. And now that is when you become a doer of the word. Make sense? When you're hurt and someone has um, lied to you or hurt you or taken advantage of you, and you remember the scripture that says, pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who um, hurt you and misuse you and abuse you. And then you get hurt by someone on your job or you get hurt by a spouse or you get hurt by a family member and you're sitting there complaining you're sitting there saying that you're going to get revenge you're sitting there saying that it's, it's going to be payback time and then you remember that scripture that says that you should pray for your enemies pray for those who hurt you and, and, and abuse you now to be a doer of the word means that you're going to you're going to humble yourself you're going to sit back down and you're going to pray for that person that hurt you see that's that's what it looks like to be a doer of the word and that's when life begins to change for us you're going to say man i i, I hear you joel but 
I, I can't I can't pray for someone that hurt me. I'm not no, there's no way I'm gonna let them get away with that and go ahead and pray for them. Well, that's what the word of God says to do. The word of God says forgive. It doesn't mean that you're going to be back in relationship with them, but the word of God says to forgive them, and the word says if they if they hurt you and they abuse you and they misuse you, the word of God says pray for those people. So being a doer of the word means that you're going to go against your feelings. You're going to go against what's natural to you. You're going to go against what your flesh wants you to do. And then you're going to become a doer of the word. And you're going to go ahead and pray for that person. Luke 11 and 28 tells us this. It says, But he said, More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So we got to ask ourselves the question, Do I want to be blessed? How can I live a blessed life? Do I really want to be blessed? Because I've I've been doing this thing my way. I've been I've been operating based on my emotions. I've been trying to use willpower. I've been doing everything with my head, but I haven't really done the word of God and I haven't seen blessings in my life. Well, here's what Luke is telling us. More than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Or they hear the word of God and they apply it. It's not just a word coming in one ear and a word leaving the other ear. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and they keep it. So the word of God is alive. The word of God has the ability to make a change in us. But I want us to understand just these few little scriptures. If you if you simply understand John 1 and 1 and you understand Hebrews 4 and 12, right? And you understand Matthew 4 and 4, that's enough word for you to begin to allow the word of God to, to come alive in you and make changes. You don't need to know the whole Bible to let the word work in you. It's important that you have enough knowledge, right? To begin to see change and the word of God tells us that it's through knowledge that the just are going to be delivered so really really important for us to understand that the Bible is telling us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so number one the number one thing I need you to understand is that the word of God is God so if you want to get with God, you don't need to light a fire. You don't need to send up smoke signal. <laughs> you don't need to cry. Right? You don't need to do all of these things. You don't need to sow a seed into someone's ministry to hear from God. Right? The Bible is telling us that the word was with God and the word was God. So the word of God is God. If I want to get with God, I can do it right now. I can do it right now. I can pull up the word of God. I can pull up the word. I can open up my Bible and right there and then I am with God. I am in the presence of God. And then Hebrews 4 and 12 begins to let us know what God is doing as we're reading his word. The word of God. This is so beautiful. For the word of God is living and powerful. That word is alive. It's living and powerful. And it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. That's powerful. The word of God has the ability to pierce into my soul and spirit and cut away at any corruption that's in there. The Word of God has the ability to do that. 
it slices as it goes in and it slices as it comes back out. It's a two-edged sword. And then it has the ability to cut through joint and marrow. So the word of God, there's no limit to what it can do. It has the ability to heal the soul, the spirit, and the body. So if I'm dealing with a spirit of lust, if I'm struggling with a spirit of addiction, if I'm struggling with a spirit of fear, if I'm struggling with a spirit of depression, if I'm struggling with a spirit of anger, if I'm struggling with the spirit of offense, if I'm struggling with a spirit of rebellion and violence, the Word of God is a two-edged sword that's able to cut through, piercing and dividing my soul and spirit. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that good news? And we don't have to remain the same. We don't have to lean on another person. Hey, listen, it's great. I have people that I call as the Lord lead me for advice and they may point me in the right direction. But ultimately, the Word of God is what I need to help me heal the deep things in me. Right? No person can reach into my soul and cut away at a spirit of fear and pull out the spirit of offense. But the Word of God has the ability to do that. And so today, I just really wanted to come on here and, um, and bring this message because I got a, a, that inbox after doing that short clip on, um, on what, to, what to consume spiritually and what to abstain from. And I thought that that was a very valid um, question and statement that that brother made by saying that he was struggling and um, he didn't see how he can muster up the willpower to stop doing the things that he was doing because he would stop for a moment but he would fall right back into sin and the thing that I want you know all of you guys to know including my brother out there is that it's the Word of God you have to allow the Word of God to do what it's supposed to do in us and it has that ability to cut away at those areas the Word of God to me I view it as my virus protection right virus protection being if I put a, vi a, a virus protection software on my computer, what that does, it fights against someone hacking into my computer and putting a virus on there. But if my computer already had a virus on there, that virus protection software also has the ability to do a cleanup. It has the ability to do a cleanup. A lot of times when computers um, are hacked and um, systems are hacked, and there's viruses put on there, a lot of times you'll lose control of the system or you'll lose control or access of certain areas because that hacker has sent the virus there or put that cookie in there so that they can take control of that area of your computer and they do their damage. Well, a lot of times we lack self-control. A lot of times we're not able to overcome those areas of struggle that we have. We find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong things, and we're struggling to restrain ourselves. We're struggling to, to regain control of ourselves because guess what? That spirit of addiction is on us. That spirit of anger is there. So in heated conversation, when you're supposed to have the ability to have self-control, you lose all control. Someone pushed the wrong button and you become inflamed and you become violent and you don't know how to control yourself. Guess what? That spirit of offense and that spirit of anger and that spirit of violence that's on you, the Word of God has the ability to clean that up like a virus protection software does. The Word of God is alive and it's powerful. And the last thing I'd like to say about this and, and, and let you know is, the Word of God can discern things. The Word of God, the Scripture tells us in, Ephesians, uh, in Hebrews 4 and 12 here at the end, it says 
and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the human heart. And the reason why the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the human heart is because the Word of God is God. God knows your heart. God knows your intent. I can lie to you and say, man, I did this because of these reasons. But even though I may lie to you and convince you that I did something for a specific reason, the Word of God or God Himself, He already knows my intention. I can tell you that was not my intention, but God already knows my intention. He can discern my heart and He can discern why I did what I did. Right? He can tell why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the Word of God is a discerner of the heart. And that's why when you consume the Word of God and you live a Spirit-filled and a Spirit-led life, you're also going to be able to get intel from the Holy Spirit concerning what's going on with someone, what's on their heart, and what their intent is. When the Holy Spirit is with you and you're reading the Word of God, you're going to be mature enough and you're going to have the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to discern those things. And so the Word of God is life. For the believer, um, if we don't want to live an impotent life, if we don't want to live an impotent lifestyle, we must consume the Word of God because the Word of God is what does the work. And if you are there right now, if you're out there right now and you're feeling like God is far from you, that you know God hasn't been close to you recently, that God is so distant, I would tell you to open up the Word of God because the Bible tells us in John 1 and 1 that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So the Word is God. And if I want to get with God, all I got to do is open up His Word. I don't need to see Him physically in front of me. I don't need to hear an audible voice, right? Even though sometimes some people experience supernaturally where they hear the voice of God right where some image appears in front of them where in a dream they get a visitation that's powerful but at any given time you can get into the presence of God and get with God by simply opening up the Word of God because the Word is God and that is why scripture is able to tell us that the Word of God is living and it's powerful that it has the ability, like a double-edged sword, to cut through spirit and soul and joint and marrow. That's why the Bible is able to tell us that the Word of God is discerning of our thoughts and our intent. Because the Word of God is God. It's the only book that will read you. It's the only book that will do surgery on your heart. It's the only book that will deliver you from infirmity. It's the only book that will deliver you from whatever spiritual injunctions are on your life. Because the Word of God is God Himself. And that's why the Bible says that the Word became flesh. And when Jesus Christ died on that cross and he rose again, guess what? He's not dead. He is alive. The Word of God is alive. And so today I just wanted to come on here just really quick just to answer that question for my brother and to also let you guys know that at any given time you need to be in the presence of God. All you need to do is open up the Word of God. If you're driving down the road and you want to be in the presence of God, I would highly recommend do something as simple as going on your phone to YouTube and, and Googling a, a YouTube any Bible um, chapter or verse or any book in the Bible and let it play while you're driving. Because just hearing the Word of God, right, whether it's Proverbs or Psalms or one of the, uh, the Gospels, hearing the Word of God in your car while you're traveling is literally having the presence of God with you. And what you're going to recognize is that the Word of God begins to unlock things in your spirit. 
right? Being Holy Spirit led and living a spirit filled life, you're going to you're going to realize that the Holy Spirit is going to bring answers to you the more you hear the word of God. And I'm not just talking about hearing a message from a preacher. I'm talking about literally just playing the word of God. Play the word of God while you're sleeping. Because even while you're sleeping, your spirit is hearing the word of God. So when you wake up and you face a challenge and the Holy Spirit needs to bring to remembrance something, because that's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit needs to bring to remembrance something to assist you through that difficult time, if you, if your spirit heard that message, if your spirit heard the word of God, then the Holy Spirit can now reach down inside of you and bring back to remembrance something from the word of God that can assist you through that challenge, right? I was talking to, um, to someone yesterday and um, he was amazed. He was saying to me, he was like, man, I remember the other day he was saying I was with someone and uh, some guys and I was preaching and he was like, the word of God just kept flowing out of me. And I was teaching so good. And he said, he said, um, he says, I couldn't even understand where this word was coming from. It's like my, my spirit just kept pulling up the word of God. And I was quoting scriptures. And I was, you know, I, I could feel the people getting impacted. And I was telling him, I said, that's because the word of God is in you. Even if you heard it in the background while you were doing something. Even if you were serving at church and you weren't even paying attention. And while you're ushering you heard the word of God when you needed to bring those scriptures back up to help those brothers while you were teaching the spirit of God in you reached down inside of you and brought to remembrance everything that you were told and that's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit the Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance everything Christ has told you in the past and that's why it's important to hear the word even if you don't memorize it, just hearing the word of God is powerful enough for the Holy Spirit to have something to work with when you're in a jam. The word will deliver you. The word will do the work. The word would cut because it's a two-edged sword. All right? The word would cut. Cut away those spiritual injunctions. Cut away that spirit of anger. The word of God has the ability to cut away at that spirit of perversion. The word of God has the ability to cut away at that spirit of offense. The word of God has the ability to heal us. It has the ability to minister to our soul. The word of God is that powerful because it's the only written thing that is a living word. Because the word is God himself. And God is alive. He is not dead. And this is why Hebrews 4 and 12 can boldly claim that the word of God is living and powerful. When you read through the, the Bible, if you do a, do a study, do a study, do a word study on the word of God. And it's going to show you consistently where the Bible talks about the Word of God being alive. It's going to show you consistently where the Bible talks about the Word of God equaling God. The Word of God being God. Consistently throughout the Bible, when you read up about the Word of God, you're going to see the consistency of the Word being alive and the Word itself being God Himself. And so today, I hope that this word makes sense to you. I hope that this word um, assists you in your journey of being delivered, your journey of being transformed, your journey of being renewed. All right? Remember, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word of God is spiritual food for the spirit man. The word of God is food for your spirit. And that's why when you're fasting and you're starving your body from actual food, right? A real fast consists of you consuming the word of God. Because when you're fasting, what are you doing? 
you are killing the flesh and you're giving your spirit man the authority to rise above your flesh. And in order to do that, what you're doing is you're breaking the body down, you're abstaining from physical food, and you're giving the spirit man spiritual food. Because guess what? You want to switch things around. Right now, for a lot of us, our spirit man is more dominant because he's stronger than, I'm sorry, our physical person, our flesh, is stronger because he's being fed more than the spirit man. Yeah. And so what we want to do is we want to abstain when we're fasting from food, and then we want to feed the spirit man, spirit food, which is the word of God. And that's when you have, that's when you take control back of yourself. That's where you take control back of your life. That's where self-control comes back to you. All right? It's, it's weird when you look at someone that's strung out on drugs, like they have no self-control. You give them $20 and the first thing they want to do is go buy drugs. They don't even think about food. Because they're addicted, that spirit of addiction is way stronger in them than the spirit of God. The spirit of addiction is also so strong that the spirit of addiction tells their body what it's going to do. And they're in obedience to that. So when they go to a drug rehab program, what they're doing is they're going on a fast, right? They lock them away from access to drugs and people that can get them drugs, right? And what they, what did they say? The, the person goes through withdrawals. Why? Because they're breaking the, the flesh. Right, and hopefully it's a biblically based uh, program, and I know some good ones where they'll send you away out of state for six months. And while you're abstaining from drugs, while you're abstaining from the environments that used to foster that 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 addictive behavior, they're now feeding the spirit of that person the Word of God. They're going to small groups. They're learning about the Word of God. They're getting testimonies from others that have overcome. They're learning new habits while being fed. Their spirit man is being strengthened. So when they come off of that six-month rehab program, it's not just them staying away from drugs, but while they were abstaining from drugs and breaking the body and the, and the, and the, and the, and the human down, they were feeding their spirit and equipping them to get back self-control. And that's what the Word of God enables us to do. At any given time, you and I have the ability to say, enough is enough. I'm going on a fast. Enough is enough. While I'm abstaining from food and I am disciplining this flesh and I'm putting my flesh in its place, I'm going to strengthen my spirit man with spiritual food, which is what? The Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How do we live? How does the spirit man live? He lives on the word of God. How does the spirit man grow and become stronger? He grows and becomes stronger because of the word of God. How does the spirit man defeat unclean spirits that are attaching themselves to your soul like a, like a virus on a computer attaches itself to the hard drive? You use the virus protection. You use the word of God. And as this word says, the word of God is a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. So you naturally have the tools, right, to use the sword of God, which is the word of God, and cut away. Cut away at the soul. Because that's where spiritual warfare happens. It happens in the soul. It happens on your mind. It happens to your will, your emotion, your imagination, and your intellect. And the Word of God, right, is potent enough to do that. The Word of God can discern what's on you and where it is. And the Word of God knows your intentions. But more importantly, the Word of God is a sword that can surgically remove those things that do not belong on your soul. And so I hope that makes sense to you guys. I love you. 
Um, I look forward to you guys. If you're if you're a guy, um, plug into our Secret Place um, Facebook page. The men we pray and we equip one another on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Um, all the men that uh, that we've counseled, whether it's couples we've counseled, we usually break off. And um, and on Tuesday nights the men meet, and Wednesday night the the women meet with Sherilyn. And that's a that's a we we put together that forum to be able to equip you. So it's not a one-time event where you just listen to our messages, but now you can come to the men's group on Tuesday night. You can ask questions. When you're comfortable, you can open up and talk about issues that you're dealing with. There are other men on there that have overcome. It's not just me, but we have other powerful men of God that's on that men's group on, on Tuesday night. And we fellowship, we pray, we, um, we, we look into the scriptures, right? Some nights we come on and we just don't even do anything but worship and pray and let the Holy Spirit move. Last week we had a powerful time of just worship and prayer. And then God moved in a mighty way through a couple of the fellas that were prophesying, that were speaking words of encouragement over other men, um, you know, um, word of knowledge. I mean, it was a powerful time. We had absolutely nothing prepared. We just came, we worshiped, and then we began to pray. And then the Spirit of the Lord began to move. We had a powerful time last week. So some of our some of our Tuesday nights, that's what it looks like. And then some of our Tuesday nights, they're discussions, deep-rooted discussions that men can open up and have with other men, right? And I'm sure the ladies have a phenomenal time on Wednesday night also. So those two forums are there for you to be able to plug in every single week and fellowship with others. The Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. So not only are we bringing you the word on Sundays and dropping you nuggets here and there along the way for you to grow and learn the word of God, but we set up an environment where you can tie in every single week and be encouraged and be prayed for and be able to ask questions, be able to get support and prayer from other men. A lot of those men have exchanged numbers and um, they've called one another. There are a lot of military men in there that are dealing with things that I can't even relate to. But guess what? We got young military guys calling retired vets that dealt with the same thing they struggled with. And they're able to get the support um, from someone that has dealt with the same things that they're going through right now. So it's really important that you don't leave yourself out there. But it's important that you fellowship with other strong believers. And I would say this also. It's important that you, you fellowship with people that will point you to God. right? Not people that would lord over you and, um, and lead you astray from God. But people that would point you to the word of God. And show you how to survive and how to thrive using the word of God. And that's what Tuesday night for the men does. And Wednesday night for the women does. Of course, you guys can always go to our website, um, which is rossfam.com. That's R-O-S-S-F-A-M-M.com. We have a lot of resources on there. Um, I have a blog on there that I write on different things that um, concerns marriage and family and things that we just naturally struggle with. Um, Sherilyn writes on there also. She has some um, prayers and some articles on there. We're going to keep upgrading that and add more and more articles and writings there right? You can go to our YouTube channel, Joel and Sherilyn Ross. We have over 230 something, maybe 240 um, videos on just about any topic concerning marriage and family and the faith um, on our YouTube channel. And of course, you know, you can always catch us doing these lives randomly. And once again, plug into the groups. Um, we're going to have a men's conference coming up real soon. We have six churches in um, in Africa that are going to be tying in and a few other local guys that are going to have small groups. If you're interested in hosting a satellite location where you can grab some men from your church or men from your neighborhood, gather in your living room and just stream it on your television. We have churches in um, Nigeria and Lagos. We got a church in Kenya and a Republic of um, ben Benin, um, Ghana, um, we have six different cities in 
um, the continent of Africa that's going to tie in. So we're going to literally have a few thousand people because they're going to um, host an event at their church while we're doing this men's conference. It's going to be on June 22nd at 10 a.m. Just for a couple of hours. If you just want to tie in, um, everything is going to be on my website soon. Um, if you just want to plug into it, um, if you want to plug in and be like a host site, grab some men and watch it on your TV. We're going to have guys from our group also setting up their homes and having people over in their basement to, to be part of the conference. It's going to be a good summer. Um, look forward to all of the new things that are going to be coming out. We're going to host another intimacy um, builder workshop soon. Keep an eye out for that also. But God is doing some great things. And we just want you to be part of that because we want to see you grow and experience the impact of the Word of God in your life and in your family. Amen. I love you guys. Let's just pray real quick before we shut this down. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this uh, time of fellowship with your people around your word. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for the brother that initiated this message by asking a, a simple question on how do I overcome my struggles? How do I, how do, I do it? He asked a question, O oh Lord, and that sparked this conversation. I pray, Father, that this message would uplift him, would empower him, and would encourage him, O oh Lord God, to know that your word makes all of the difference. Father, I thank you for everyone else that's listening to this right now and those that are going to catch this later on or on the YouTube channel. Father, we bless and, and, and lift up your name, O oh Lord God, for your word says that if your name be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. And so we lift up the name of Jesus right now because that name is above all names. That name is a name that's worthy to be praised. The name of Jesus is powerful. I thank you, Father, for your word. For your, for the, the Bible tells us that the word of the Lord is alive and it is powerful. It is like a two-edged sword piercing even through the division of the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow, and it is a discerner of our thoughts and even our intent. And so, Father, with the word being as potent as it is, O Lord God, we do not want to neglect from hearing the word of God. For the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. For the Bible also tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, Father, we know that if we want to see you, if we want to spend time with you, all we need to do is open up the Word of God, and we have the presence of God. And so right now, Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor and praise for this opportunity to, to learn and to grow and to fellowship around your Word. I pray that this Word would make all the difference in the life of your uh, of your people. Father, I pray the full armor of God over them right now so that they would be able to stand against the walls of the devil. And I thank you, Father, for your angels that are in camp, round and about them, bearing them up lest they dash their foot against a stone. I thank you, Father, that no weapon forged against your people and their children and their family and their household, none of those weapons would prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment, I condemn now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Love you guys. Hope you have a good evening. It's nice and sunny outside. It's probably almost 70 degrees today. I hope wherever you live that it's nice weather. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Love you guys and we'll talk soon.